Hey, hi everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot uh, H2O for hosting us. This is, has been a really, really great event. And congratulations to the whole team for organizing it. Uh, you know, we get to learn about so much about each other's work. And then, more importantly, we get to make some great friends. So thank you and congratulations. And before I start, I want to thank you, sir. So your presentation was really great. And let me tell you, your presentation was a clear a classic example of that why storytelling is the, uh, the most underrated skill set and most needed. So your storytelling made counting zebra so intriguing and so interesting while it is very important and made me thinking sitting there that what am I doing with my life? I should do something important. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, so my name is Karamjit Singh. Clearly, people cannot pronounce it. Clearly, so you can call me Karam. Uh, I work as a director uh, in MasterCard uh, as AI products. I'm going to talk about uh, what are the use cases of AI uh, in payment industry and more closely to our world, which is credit card. Since I'm from MasterCard, so I'm going to talk about fraud. Otherwise, you won't believe that I'm from MasterCard. But I will talk about a little bit more things so that it is not stereotype or boring. So I'll talk about three things. So fraud detection how AI can, can or is being used in fraud detection, how AI can or is being used for transaction processing overall, and then for payment opti optimization. So let's start with fraud. Why do we talk a lot about fraud? Because there are so many types of fraud. So these are just examples. So from credit card industry, there are mainly two types of fraud. There's a third party fraud, there's a first party fraud. So what is third party fraud? Third party fraud further has a lot of kinds and we're trying, you know, we're dealing with day in, day out. Account takeover, it's a very uh, traditional kind of fraud which basically, you know, someone stolen your credit card details, take over your account and then trying to do a transactions. Stolen identity is another one, but this is more on the, uh, you know, stolen someone stolen your SSN or someone you're stolen your, some ID and then trying to use it for getting the loans or some stuff like that. Synthetic identity is another fraud where people just keep the two, three different IDs and merge it and trying to create some new ID and then open account, get a loan and blah, blah, blah. And then fabricated information because of this technology world, new AI, AI and like, you know, people are talking about AI also does some sort of, some of harm also. It can create some real looking pay stubs. It can create some real looking SSN, which you can't differentiate. It's a real or fake. So people fabricate it, use it for fabricating information and then use it to do the fraud. Loan stacking is another one. People go to bank or go to different organization at the same time and then trying to get a loans at the, you know, within the 15, 20 minutes to stack up the loans and then don't pay it. Credit pay, Peggy Binking is another one in US. Credit you know, score is very important. I got to realize it very soon because I moved to US just two months back and nobody's trying to give me a loan or credit card. Why irony is I'm from MasterCard and not getting any credit card because of the credit score. But yeah, so that's another one. There are so many uh, companies or, you know, fraudster who are trying to, can boost your credit score by, you know, offering you a lot of loans and lends you. Then there's a first party fraud which is very growing recently and become a focus of payment industry very, very recently, especially after COVID because of the whole, uh, you know, the online digital payment expansion. The first party fraud where the individual is involved in that some type of fraud and unfortunately they are getting involved in one way or another. So there are another fronting, fronting is another one like very simple like uh, you open, you got a loan on the car on your parents name either, other than your name just to get a better rates. That's a fronting example. Address fronting is that someone's living in a city but give an address of some village to avoid the taxes. That's another fraud. Then the de-shopping is another one which, which really uh, interests the credit, credit card uh, industry is that you buy something and then you return it later on by using it, especially in clothing and all. And then since a lot of companies focus, main priority is the customer, um, you know, customer optimization, customer focus oriented, so they don't care. Like, but that's hurting a business big time. Then good loss in transit fraud, people buy something and then say that, oh, I didn't get it, or I got it in broken space, or then do and then end up using it without paying it. Mewling is another one. It's more like a third party. You give your credentials to someone else and then they let them, let them to use it for some reasons, but you're still involved. Sleeper fraud is that 
you open an account for like good six months, you are paying everything until you get a better credit and then you do your fraud at a once. So that's a sleeper fraud. That's also a big problem to solve. And friendly fraud is another one that credit card, again, chargeback is another important thing which helps customer, but end, customer end up making a misuse of it. So they get the, they get the um, product and then they claim that they didn't get it, so they end up raising a chargeback. So chargeback is a big pain for the whole payment industry because it hurts a merchant and issuer with respect because of various pains. So that's another thing which we deal with. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about MasterCard, what MasterCard brings in uh, to cater the fraud. So MasterCard mainly has these three flagship products among many products. So but these are the ones which you know I'm involved in, so I'll talk about it. So decision intelligence is one of the flagship products from MasterCard, which basically, uh, for every transaction which you are doing on your credit card, in a real time, we generate a score where we say that how likely this transaction is a fraud or not, and then we give it to the issuer and tell, let them to take a decision of that, but it has to be happening in a real world, in a real setting, in those two seconds where you are making those transactions. Safety net is another similar model working at a transition level, but it is catering more on the anomaly detection, especially when there is some attack on that merchant or some POS machine or some gateway. So we look at the anomalies, like whether the patterns are suddenly changed at particular location, so that we flag it, so we stop it. Those two are at the transaction level, and the third one is account intelligence. In, in uh, payment industry, account means card. So we, give, we send a lot of scores uh, to the banks uh, for your card, which are basically predictive scores, which tells, like uh, you were saying, that predictive way we do that. We say that, okay, in order to fraud, avoid the risk and fraud. So we say that, okay, uh, this card likely already compromised because it has done some you know, shady transactions, which we believe so better to reissue because it's going to be experience some fraud very soon. Another is that, okay, this card is likely to do raise a chargeback pretty soon, so better to do something about it. This card is likely to do uh, some transaction at some risky merchant, so better to do something about it. So basically telling issuers to react before it, the event occurs. So that's, that's another solution. So that's the fraud space. Then the other thing which I want to talk about is the payment processing and here I think the speed and efficiency, these are the two words which are very, very important. So uh, for a couple of years back, people were, you know, whole world was talking about millennial generation, which I was gladly part of, but now people started talking about Zen X, Zen Z or whatever it is, which I want to part, but I cannot be. So. Uh, so what is happening? We are evolving as a human being. We are learning new skills, but we are also getting a little impatient. I don't know whether we realize it or not. Like, we want everything quicker, right? We want a quicker delivery at our home for grocery. We want quicker, uh, we want to reach from A to B more quicker. And instead of two hour movie, we are now enjoying 10 seconds TikTok, right? So that's what we are becoming. We wanted everything in quicker term. So as we are evolving, the payment needs to catch up to it. The metaverse, everything which is coming our way, we cannot expect the new generation to wait for their transition to happen. We need to catch it up to that. That's why the, the efficiency and speed is very, very important. And there's a lot of stuff which, uh, you know, financial industry can do in it. Again, I'm citing very few things, but a lot of applications a lot of one across one billion almost transaction happens every day so that means a lot of load on a lot of server how do you manage that load down load downtime load time you know which transition should route through which server at what time so that you know you have a better approval rates lesser declines and better customer experience we talk a lot about the modeling and all but you know customer experience is also very important for financial industry or everyone like automating some of the processes very simple like chatbot i think very well uh, already adopted in the financial industry or the banks then enhancing user interface and experience it's not just about better ui it's more about relevant ui so i, I had a two year i have a two year daughter so amazon is showing me diapers on the front screen for you it might be showing something else so it's a better user experience i want to buy diapers you don't want to buy diapers right so that's that's all coming from ai and that is similar happening in the payment industry it's not just, so banks have so many products what is coming on your screen what is relevant to you which card is relevant to you is very very important 
And for my screen, no card is coming up right now. So <laughs> security is very important. APIs, you know, the API world is growing. Everything is API call. So, but then obviously fraudsters are also evolving. So we need to protect that. That's another thing. And I said hassle-free payments, quick and hassle-free. KYC, another thing, know your customer. How do you onboard a customer? It's a corporate or individual, people having less patience. People don't want to go to banks, especially the newer generation. And I felt very heavy saying that newer generation because I am not part of that anymore. But still, like, you know, they just want to do it, everything digital, quickly, quick and hassle-free. That's what they want. So we need to provide that. That's another thing which payment industry needs to catch up. The last piece I want to talk about is payment optimization. So what kind of optimization we can do? So I don't know how many of you, when the transition happens, what happens, I'll, I'll give you a little demo. So I went to a Walmart. I transacted my card there. Walmart is a merchant. So then there is a processor who is handling Walmart business. So they take that transaction, and now the circus starts. So they take the transaction, they send to that Walmart bank, which is acquirer for us. Acquirer validate that transaction, do some checking. And now acquirer said, OK, I'm going to send that transaction to further. To whom? MasterCard. We are a network. We sit between the acquirer and issuer. We say, OK, uh, we are taking your transaction, but we need to earn some money also. So we run over a lot of models. We take that acquirer message. We we run our models, and then we attach that information in the real time, and then send that information to issuer. And the first cycle is that we are authenticating. We are not authenticating is that we are sending that information to issuer bank or cards bank, saying that, you know, is this pin right? Is, does this guy has a balance or not? So issuer say yes. So we take that message, goes to acquirer, acquirer goes to merchant, and say okay, okay. Then it says sends again. Now we need to authorize. Acquirer sends again. We add the risk scores. We run our models, and then we take the issuer. Issuer say okay. We say okay. Whether you want to apply, approve, or decline, you say okay, approve. I take it back, and then I send it to acquirer. Acquirer send it to processor. Processor send it to that merchant machine, and it says yes, approved. It is all happening while you are cursing for those two seconds that why this transaction is not going through, right? So next time you appreciate more when the transition happens. So that's, that's, the, that's, and then every player in the system want to do AI. We want to do AI, acquirer wants to do AI, payment processor want to do AI, and wanted to predict a risk, and everyone is doing all along in those two seconds and attaching the scores and then making decisions, and that's the ecosystem we are living in. So that's the fraud, but then there's optimization we can do. For example, acquirer, which is a merchant bank, needs to pay some money to issuer for transferring those funds as a risk funds. But that acquirer has an options, a lot of options to choose from. And that we call it an interchange rate. Interchange rate is a fees which acquirer pays to issuer for every transaction. Now, acquirer, that interchange rate varies based on a lot of uh, elements. Transition amount, transition merchant, where is the location, at what time you are doing, what kind, is it an international, it is a domestic, a lot of factors. Now, in a real time, now right now the systems are rule-based. Acquirer is doing it a rule-based system. Okay, if this is the kind of transition, I'm going to route through this network or this processor or this. So he's making a lot of decisions. So that's the one example where uh, if, if it wants to optimize the interchange fees, it can make real-time decisions by using AI. Then obviously merchant also, if you see when to merchant, uh, Lot. So we don't realize it, but merchant also has a lot of options, which processors to use, which acquirer to use in that time, so they can use it to get the better approval rates and get a better processing. So a lot of optimization can happen while all this circus happens to approve your payment, right? So last, uh, I don't know how much time I took. So last, I want to talk about what do we do at MasterCard uh, in terms of AI? So you know, a we are embedding AI into the whole MasterCard for a long time now. I've been part of it. So these are our five pillars where we focus. Uh, so we obviously, there's a lot of products. MasterCard's, a, you know, uh, been there for a long time. So there are already a lot of products which were before uh, AI became a real thing. So we are empowering those existing products with AI. We are building new products with just AI. 
and then at the end of the day mastercard is also a one company which has to run a lot of things within that company there's an hr department there's a legal department there's a compliance there is all other things which are happening in company so we do that for internal also everywhere we can use ai for optimizing our processes ethical ai is very very important uh, to be honest because for mass something like mastercard uh, we obviously work a lot of uh, do a lot of work and make sure that the models are not biased the payments or the risk scores because we deal in a very sensitive Area. We are we are asking it, the issuers to decline a transaction, so we can't be biased in saying that whose transaction to be declined and who's not. So that's the one example. So we focus on that, and then AI for good. So again, for inclusivity, so identifying the areas where the people are not uh, adopting payments, digital payments, and we know how it good it can be. Use AI for that. We recently had a uh, collaboration with the Economy, which is basically giving a carbon footprint score for every transaction. So MasterCard is involving those things also. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kara.